Have you ever met a superhuman? Well, if you pass the people in tonight's episode on the street, you might not even think twice about them. But we believe their talent and sheer determination put them in a superhuman class. First up, Nelson Dellis has a superhuman brain. So when most of us can't even remember where we put our keys, this guy can remember 70 names and faces in just 15 minutes. He's been crowned the US memory champion and he put my memory to the task. And man, was I shocked. Take a look. Nelson Dellis can memorize a shuffle deck of cards in 38 seconds. Ace of spades, 10 of hearts, five of spades, 344 random numbers in five minutes. One zero seven five zero three six three five eight nine one one seven. And that's just a fraction of what this memory superstar can do. So congratulations. Nelson Dellis is the 2011 winner of the USA Memory Championship, where he also broke the US record for memorizing numbers and playing cards. It's never ending, you know, you just kind of want to see how far you can push, push the mind. We're about to get a glimpse of how far he's pushed his. Four, two, one. I'm reading off a list of 50 random numbers Nelson has never heard before, as he tries to commit them to memory. Eight, three, nine. All right, so we have four, two, one, zero, Seven five zero three six three five eight uh, nine one one seven seven two seven four. It's four, astounding eight, um, to watch eight, as nine, Nelson eight, recalls eight, five, all two, fifty three, numbers. Six, five, eight nine six two zero eight three nine. And that's why you are the U.S. memory champion. And then, and then I have to do this. I'm going to do it backwards. Why not? Why not? So nine three um, eight. Zero, and two, yes, um, he nine, nails eight, nine, three, that zero, too. Five, six, three, six, three, zero one two four. Got it. That's remarkable. Okay. It seems almost superhuman, and I can't help but wonder. You're not some type of savant. Right. You don't have this off-the-charts IQ. You, you don't have a photographic memory. No. Nope. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any of those things. I'm just an average guy. Yeah. Nelson yeah, insists anyone can Thank do you. what he does yeah, with enough name. training uh, and a good probably. imagination and he's made it his mission to tell anyone who will listen. Thanks for being out here, this is an awesome cause. A quest he concedes has become a bit of an obsession after losing his grandmother to Alzheimer's disease. So you fear that maybe one day that you could have Alzheimer's? You never know, and, and that's scary, that at that age that something can happen to you like that where your mind just goes. He set up a charity, Climb from Memory, scaling the world's highest mountains to raise money and awareness for the disease. About 19,000 feet up there, Everest. And when he's not climbing, he's always exercising his mind. Self-taught, Nelson uses several memory techniques, depending on what he's trying to remember. So let's take my name, for example. Sure. Wes Moore. So Wes, I think of um, West. I think of like the Wild West. That's just what instantly comes to my mind. And then Moore kind of sounds like more. Like maybe he's like extremely cowboy, like over the top. Like he's got he's cowboy. He's got over the top spurs, chaps. He's more than he should be, right? Next, he finds a feature where he can store the image. And for you, I just think of your. Your, your head, your... My dome. Your dome, yeah. So I would imagine that cowboy kind of strolling over your dome. So next time I see you, man, I'm gonna look right at your head and then I'll think Wes Moore. Okay, but how did he memorize all those numbers we gave him earlier? The answer is, he didn't. I don't see numbers anymore, I see people and I see actions and objects flying around and, and doing all sorts of silly things. He turns into a movie. Take 7503. 75 is my grandfather, and 03 is Jack Black. Um, and Jack Black's action, I think of him in the movie Nacho Libre, um, he's a wrestler. So I think of my grandfather wrestling, and he's like rolling around on the floor. 7274 creates a very different image. That's George Bush, 72. The ex-president, 74, is 
Gerard Depardieu the, as a musketeer. So his action is sword fighting. And so I picture George Bush sword fighting, you know, and he's wearing his presidential attire and he's got a, a fencing sword. Next, to remember the order of the numbers, he creates something called a memory palace? A place that I know in my mind that I can walk through without thinking about it, that I've been to. This could be like your childhood home, your workplace. For our numbers challenge, he chose a favorite hotel, placing the first set of numbers, his wrestling grandfather, in the lobby. The next, George Bush fencing on a staircase leading to the second floor. And then to recall it, all I'm doing is just walking mentally through that place and seeing the images that I stuck there. And you say that anybody can do this. Totally, yeah. And in fact, this afternoon we'll uh, have you memorize something that you don't know what it is. I'm not going to have me memorize it. Yes. Nelson, I'm nervous, man. He's about to give me a blockbuster of a challenge when we meet at Vizcaya, a national landmark in Miami. Who do you think won the best picture Oscar in 1988? No idea. What about 1976? I don't know. Can you name any movie that won best picture? Didn't Milk win one year? Nope, didn't win. Did The Wrestler win? No, no, no. Did Glory win? Glory never won, no. I'm beginning to see where this is probably headed, and Nelson's about to prove me right. We're actually going to take you through here and have you memorize all of the movies that won Best Picture for the Oscars since 1928. Since 1928? Yeah, so that's 83 movies. Seriously, he has got to be kidding. 83 movies? I tell you, Nelson, you have picked a very daunting task for yourself, so Great. good luck. All right. <laughs> this Kaya will be my memory palace. I'll learn the movies decade by decade using objects throughout the estate to help me recall each film. For the 1930 Oscar winner, All Quiet on the Western Front, it's a face on a fountain. So yeah. what I imagined was just, just saying, okay, shh, quiet, that should be enough. All Quiet on the Western Front, shh, quiet. Next up, the 1931 Western Cimarron. We decide the name kind of sounds like Simmer and come up with a crazy image of a pot simmering on a bush. Okay, so now we're gonna do the next year, which was 1932. Before I know it, we've sailed through the decade and reached the 1948 classic, Hamlet. We imagine a ham lying on a bench. And maybe you're deciding whether to or to not pick it up. Mm -hmm. See where I'm going? Like, mm -hmm. to be or not to be kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. To pick it up or not to pick it up. You don't know. That piece of ham is just sitting there. I okay. like that. Okay. This is definitely fun. But I'm seriously wondering how I'm ever going to learn 83 films in an afternoon. Coming up, some Oscar-winning moments I'd rather forget. Um, uh, don't tell me, I... Uh, and I give this 17-year-old a memory challenge of my own. 100 words in 15 minutes. Can she do it? When Nelson Dellis won the 2011 USA Memory Championship, he faced tough competition Fiber clubs. from some unlikely challengers. Third card is... King of Hearts. That's high school senior Michael Glantz and 17-year-old Sophia Hugh battling it out for the top spot. Nine of speed. Members of the Hershey, Pennsylvania High School memory team one of only a handful nationwide. Ready to go. On Thursday afternoons, you can find the team studying playing cards and numbers and words, then recalling them one by one. Magic. Sophia not only made it to the championship finals, she also broke the national record for memorizing words, 120 in 15 minutes. I think it's one of my best experiences in my life. Hearing impaired, she hears with the help of a cochlear implant. When you first started, around how many words could you remember? Um, about 40 words. That was not really good. <laughs> how did you go from 40 words to 120 words breaking the national record? Practice. I knew I could just do it. Just go for it. Hoping to get a glimpse of this memory champ in action, we gave Sophia 15 minutes to memorize in order 
100 words she's never seen before. Let's see how you do. <sighs> Teacher practice, capital time, pressure. It's amazing to see her clip through all 100 words with barely a pause. Two minutes later, she's done. This is how you did. Well, had to push it perfect. 100% perfect. <laughs> Thank you. While Sophia is the word champ, Michael Glantz is the team's poetry master, and an unlikely one at that. You're a power lifter. Yeah. You're a football player. Yeah. And you're also a poetry memory champ. <laughs> I know they don't really go together, but uh, it works. Works is putting it mildly. Michael Glantz, come on. In 2011, Michael grabbed the national title for memorizing poetry. That you are fair or wise is vain, comma, or strong, comma. Especially rich, impressive comma, for someone who ended up a poetry champ almost by accident. Uh, I was really into football and my grades started to slip. And I thought, hey, maybe the memory team will help me uh, advance my studies. And I turned out to be pretty good at the poetry. Was, His uh, grades improved surprising. too, from B's and C's to A's. At this point, I'd be happy to squeak by with just a passing grade on my own quest to memorize 83 Oscar-winning movies in an afternoon. I'm Matt Vizcaya, a national landmark in Miami where Nelson has been teaching me the films decade by decade using objects throughout the estate. 1970 is going to start on this bush. We're halfway there, and I finally start to get the hang of it when we reach the 1971 film the French Connection. And this is going to sound really odd. Okay. But I'm actually thinking that these actually look like French fries. Okay, good. From here. Yeah, no, that's, that's so great. They're all kind the of French vertical. fry connection, hence the French Connection. Okay, good. For the Oscar winner, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, I can't help but think of Jack Nicholson. But when I'm thinking about Jack Nicholson, I'm thinking of The Shining. Oh, uh, yeah. And I almost feel like, as I'm looking at it, I see five Jack Nicholsons peer up and say, like, here's Johnny. Johnny. The five heads will help me remember the year, 1975. All right, so now we're gonna do the 1980s. Before I know it, we've soared through the 1980s and reached the 1998 film, Shakespeare in Love. We picture Shakespeare canoodling with a lady friend in love. Go get a room, Shakespeare. Exactly. For the Oscar winner, American Beauty, all either of us can imagine is rose petals falling. Beautiful. We got one more decade, all right? Cool. As we hit the final decade, we're overlooking the perfect setting for the 2001 Oscar winner, A Beautiful Mind. I just think a beautiful brain sandwiched in between those two pillars. It's a beautiful scene and there's a mind. A scene that will also help me remember the 2004 film, Million Dollar Baby. I have a friend who says baby to everything. He would say, this is a million dollar view, baby. So, <laughs> there you go. million dollar baby. Is, yeah, for sure, that's awesome. For the King's speech, we picture Colin Firth up there in the distance. We just went through eight decades of movies. Yeah, we did. And now we gotta, we gotta test you, we gotta test you on it. When we started out, I couldn't even name one Oscar winner. So at this point, I'd be happy not to embarrass myself. I'm seeing the man talking, I'm asking him to be quiet, it's all quiet on the Western Front, and then I'm, I'm seeing the, the, the leaves, and that's Cimarron. Good. I'm shocked when I make it to 1951 without forgetting one film. But even when I stumble, it takes only a small reminder. There's just above it, there was a st half statue. I'm seeing, it's, it's, a, it's a woman, it's a woman with the Eiffel Tower on her head, uh, American in Paris. Yeah. Back on track, I sweep through the next five decades, and to the finish. After the Hurt Locker, we look up, we look at the king giving the speech, and that is the king's speech. Very good, you got it. I got it, but then not everyone gets to learn from a memory champ. By the way, a few weeks after I met Nelson, my sister asked me if I still remembered all 83 Oscar-winning movies. And using the techniques Nelson taught me, I actually still recall most of them.